My name is Cassie Summers. Welcome to the Curious Universe podcast. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Curious Universe podcast. Today, I want to dive in a little bit deeper with self-doubt. So I just did a um, uh, kind of like a short video on self-doubt. It's on the YouTube channel if you want to check it out. And it was uh, kind of giving these tips and tricks that people could use when self-doubt comes up. And as I was kind of going through that video, I was like, wow, this topic is actually so huge. And there's so many components to it. So um, I wanted to come here and go in a little bit deeper with you and see if we can break up more of the lie of self-doubt and clear out that that foundational piece and see like what you can launch off of from there. So as usual on the show, I'm going to ask you to get curious about your own universe here. So even when I'm bringing up a story, and I might be talking about myself or someone that I've worked with, look inside your universe start to explore your universe. You're asking questions and you're getting clear. I sometimes self-doubt can actually be kind of tricky in that you don't even realize that you're functioning from an underlining point of view of self-doubt in some area. So for example, self-love, we've all heard this. It's a buzzword, right? Like self-love, self-love, love yourself, love yourself. Yeah, if you have an underlining current of doubt in the value of you, well, how can you love you? Mm -hmm. If you have an underlying current of doubt in your capacity to do your job, to be a good parent, um, to be a, like anything, then that is going to kind of corrupt your awareness about what's what you're truly capable of and then you'll actually what most of us do is we resist anything that would acknowledge our being anything that would be in conflict or opposition to the underlying current we either will resist it and react to it or we can't even um we can't even sense it. It's like not even in our universe. It's so far away. So let's say, let's take like love relationship, for example. If you have this underlying current that you're not worthy of love, so you doubt in the value of you to such a degree that you don't even know if you're lovable. Well, then when you, you obviously can't love yourself. But also if someone were to come into your life that would be really loving, that would truly acknowledge you and love your very being, you will either resist that person, you'll fight even having them in your life, or you, you won't even be able to see them. They're like just a face in a crowd, a sea of people. So what is this self-doubt thing? Like doubt itself is... Um, and access consciousness, we talked about it as a distractor implant. So doubt is to distract you from, well, creating your life, having a life that you like to have, from going for everything that you could go for. Doubt takes you off of possibility. Anytime doubt shows up, right? Now, what if a bird doubted that it could fly? Would it ever fly? No. But we, we peoples, 
will create a whole universe to support our doubt, to convince ourselves that we can't, or we'll listen to all the people that are telling us that we can't or that we're not valuable or this or this or this. And so how does doubt even come into the equation? We all have our own story, right? It could have been like for you, what was it? Was it that your parent, one of your parents or both of your parents doubted themselves and then you kind of adopted that as your reality? Oh, we're supposed to doubt ourselves here. Okay, cool. I would doubt, I will doubt myself. Or did they doubt you? You know, some parents, uh, they see like their little nine month old trying to walk and they're like, oh my God, how are they going to do that? (laughs) They've been like, I've had to carry them around for so long and they're crawling and I know one day they're going to walk, but it seems impossible. It seems like an impossible leap, right? And then if you acknowledge the, the psychic creature that you are, you could have put that doubt into your world as a truth. So all the doubt you put into your world as a truth about you, what if you were willing to destroy and uncreate that? Now I'm going to use the access of consciousness clearing statement. We've used it on the show before, and you will find a link below to the clearing statement.com right and wrong, good and bad, puck and pod, all nine shorts, boys, povets, and beyond. So what that does, those set of words, It's just a, you could think of it as a magic wand that just can clear out energy. It can clear out these stuck things, these underlying currents. Often when you, when something's not changing in your life that you'd like to change, there's some energetic thing going on. And until you address the energetic thing, it's not going to change. So if you've been like looking for self love, looking for love in your life, a partner, uh, you, you know, you want, like true romances, your soulmate, whoever it is, and you're looking for that and it's not showing up, it's not showing up. There's an energetic thing going on there. You requested the universe, the universe is going to deliver. That's just the laws of the universe. That's all there is to it. And how many of you actually doubt that too? Do you doubt that the universe will deliver for you? Mm -hmm. And for what reason would it not deliver for you? Everything that you ask for. Notice what thoughts come up. So what comes up when I ask you that question? What's the doubt there? Whose doubt is that? Is it your doubt? Is it an adoptive doubt? And start to deconstruct that in your universe. Because if you can clear out that energy, if the doubt's gone, then you're the bird that spreads its wings and flies. If the doubt's there, you're the bird that's going to fall down from the tree because you didn't even open your wings. Because you were like, how are these things going to make me fly? Cool. So as you're kind of like coming up into presence with that that self-doubt, Okay. You can, you can like, we can do an example right now. You can bring up something in particular. Maybe you've had like a, you want to make a big career change or you, uh, you want to write your first big book (laughs) or you, um, love someone so much and you've been terrified to tell them how you feel. Okay. In doubt that, they won't reciprocate. So bring up whatever that is, okay? And now we're going to, together, we're going to deconstruct the doubt a little bit. So if you had no doubt in your capacity to achieve anything, first ask yourself, would you even like to achieve it? So sometimes I see people, they like to have some like unachievable because I'm using hashtags and I just really some of you might not be watching the video because in my, my point of view is literally nothing is unachievable, especially magic. Okay. But some people like to have something that they've decided is unachievable because it's kind of like that, that like ongoing drama. If you look at what, like every single TV show, Netflix show, 
if there's like a love drama, they carry it over forever wondering will they get together will they break up oh they're kind of together but now they're kind of breaking up like it's this thing that kind of creates the excitement of drama in your life so could i do this business could i not do this business like they like to have it as a but when you actually look at oh if i if i had no doubt in my capacity to have this person in my life fully would i actually want to be with that person and getting like really clear because again, that that doubt keeps you from awareness. It keeps you from clarity. It keeps you from actually truly perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving the information. So, so okay, so you're bringing up something that you have some self-doubt about. And now you're going to look at, are you using the self-doubt to keep you from actually choosing the thing that you don't want to choose? So if you've been pining for someone forever and you've been terrified to tell them because they might not like you back, but... In, in all truth, you have more fun pining than you actually would being with them. Get vulnerable with yourself. Check in. Is that true? Is it more fun like fantasizing about leaving this job and I'm going to just throw everything up and they'll miss me when I'm gone and I'm going to go off to this new job than if you actually look at this new job? Is that actually going to create what you're looking for? Okay. So, so everywhere you're using self-doubt to keep you from choosing the things that you don't even actually want to choose, would you be willing to destroy and create that and just be honest with you? Would you like to choose that? Would you like to be with that person? Would you, would you actually like to actualize that? So you're like, oh yeah, could I actually have a business where, you know, I travel the world and I facilitate classes and you're like, oh, all in self-doubt. Well, would you actually enjoy that? That's not for everyone. You gotta, you gotta get a little bit vulnerable with yourself and get brutally honest with what you would like to have. So sometimes, so this is what we're, we're get, you're letting go of a tool where you've maybe been using self-doubt. <laughs> to keep you from choosing things that you don't want to choose. Maybe you actually secretly love your job and you're pretending like you hate it because it's fun and there's drama and then you can like, you know, use that for, to your advantage in all these different ways. So get, get honest here, okay? So maybe that's not the case for you. So you brought up the thing that you've been having some self-doubt about. And you're like, no, actually, when I tap into this, when I'm really vulnerable and really present, I'm like 100% committed. I would be willing to do whatever it takes. This is so my next step. This is the thing that I am going to actualize in my life. Okay. Do you see how now, like when you actually like allow yourself to really touch in, tap into that. And when you know that it's a yes for you, there's very little space for the self-doubt, right? It's going to creep in possibly later, but I just want you to be here for a minute because if you are, if you are here with me and you're going, I'm having this, like this is, the, this is actually truly what I've been asking for. Now, this is a different story than when you're using self-doubt to keep you from choosing stuff that you don't want to choose, right? You're going, this is something really valuable to me. This is something I would be 100% yes for. Okay. Now, for you might notice the self-doubt is completely gone. Just fucking run from here. Sorry to swear. Just go with it. You know, flow with it. You've got it. And just keep you choosing forward. And if the self-doubt comes up, you can use the, uh, we'll maybe put a link to the video because I gave some steps to use. Who does it belong to? Clearing out that kind of stuff, right? Um, in the in the previous video I mentioned, I didn't finish that thought. Now, if you're going, yes, I would. I would actually, it is congruent. I'd be willing to have it. Yet I still have this little inkling of could I actually do this? This is such a, big dream of mine. This is so big. I don't know if I could do it. Now we're going to look at that with 
with you. What? Yeah, there we go. So is that again, yours? Is that an adopted point of view, those underlying energetics that we collect from people around us? Is it your awareness that other people, maybe they actually can't, but maybe you can? Maybe you can. What if you, what if you're the only one that can? (laughs) Some people don't want to know that because then that makes you not normal. It makes you, you don't fit in anymore, right? You're one of the misfits. And then you would probably have to look at the possibility. You'd have to look at what it would be like to not have self-doubt. Because if you knew that you were the only one that could bring it in, the only one that could actualize this in this particular way, then it would be very hard for you to have that self-doubt. So let's go to the place of what is the value of the self-doubt for you. Nothing is, well, nothing is like perfectly, definably, predictably solid. This is exactly what's going to happen in your life. And some people, they want to know, they risk management, right? They want to know, I have... 0% risk if I choose this. And for them, that's the only way that they don't have self-doubt. For other people, they're like, I don't know how I'm going to get there. I don't know what it's going to take, but it's happening. There is no back door. It is happening. It is occurring. It will occur if the whole universe will bend (laughs) for this to occur. This is occurring. So which one are you? Where do you land with this? Where is self-doubt in your universe now? Does it even exist? Can it exist? You have wings. Do you doubt you can fly? You have wings. Do you doubt you can fly? Let's let's bring this into... I'm going to use money as as an example because this was one that actually... um, was something for me. So I grew up with a lot of poverty. Okay. And every like bright idea I had that my mom could use, my single mom could use to bring, to like create more money was kind of shot down. And, but I just kept feeling like I, I, you know, I have all these ideas. I have all these ideas. So even though they kept getting shot down, I didn't actually cultivate any self doubt at that time. Then I start going to school. And so I took out a student loan, university, took out a student loan. And then I was working, I think, three jobs. And money was just actually kind of coming in when I needed it. And that was really, truly my reality. I had no doubt. And sometimes it was a bit of a hustle, but I always like kind of, I knew I was going to pay my bills. I knew I was going to have this. I knew things were good. Okay. And then I got better jobs and it just, I kept excelling. Then I get into a um, super abusive relationship and the seeds of doubt started there, the doubts in my capacity. And it's funny because I had doubts in my capacity to generate money, even though I supported this person for two and a half years, I moved us to another province. I did all that, paid for all of that, then continued to support them there doing various jobs. Yet I still had this weird idea that I can't, what if I can't actually make enough money to survive? And it had grown in me. It was like a, like a actually kind of like weed. So don't like the weed analogy, but it was like a corruptive little seed that was like sprouting dark roots in my mind and in my universe about myself. And I started to develop self-doubt. So now here I am a single mom splitting from my partner. And I have, I'm just like, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can provide for these kids. We might starve. Then we might end up on the street. They might not have no house, like all these things going on in my universe. How bizarre. When up until that point, it was never a question of, will I pay my bills? It was, I'm paying my bills. 
like the bird with the wings. Well, I'm going to, I have wings. I will fly then. So now trying to overcome the self doubt was quite the challenge because I would, you know, get the bills paid or whatever. And there would be this constant like fluctuation of like, oh, I actually didn't get the bill paid. And then I got to move and use this credit card. And like, I'm doing this juggling thing. So, I mean, in essence, it did get paid, but not from the space before when it was, of course, I can provide the money to pay the bills. I started to doubt my capacity to provide basic income to pay my bills. That wasn't my doubt. That was gifted to me. <laughs> and I had to un like pull out the roots of that doubt. I had to pull out all these lies about myself because they they weren't just singular. They were connected to other things, right? So connected to, um, well, I just might be kind of insane and that's why I can't make money or I might just be kind of stupid and that's why I can't make money or I might be like too busy or I might be too like all these kind of entanglements. And so as I kept pulling out the roots of the self-doubt, I was noticing how much it was connected to all these other things. And it wasn't until I like actually cleared the way that I started to regenerate my reality, my awareness of, of course, I will pay the bills, of course. And um, and for me, paying the bills is so little in compared to what I'm actually choosing. It's not, of course, I'll pay the bills. It's, of course, I will generate wealth beyond this reality. Of course, I will... Um, uh, succeed in this business and this I have multiple businesses and multiple things going on, of course. And because it, it just is now. So when you look at this self doubt for you, maybe it is love. Maybe, so maybe something showed you along the way. They, and this is what I mean, like the gift of my gaslighter. That wasn't a gift. <laughs> yeah, you really, I mean, come on, you could look at everything as a gift if you're willing to. But what he had implanted in me as the doubt of my very being, for you, it might be you never really received a love. Or maybe you had a really abusive relationship and then you had bought into, am I, am I actually valuable enough to love? Am I worthy of love? Um, maybe you just never saw love growing up. And so you don't know what it is to love yourself. You never saw anyone loving themselves. So it was just something like that you put out of your universe. Oh, we don't love ourselves. We abuse ourselves. Okay. That's what we do here. Right? So look at this piece for yourself. And what you're going to do is, so you're going to get kind of clear and hopefully you've been having some ahas through this show and you're going to get present with it. And I, I want you to really look at, is it true? Is it true about you? If, if you had no past, if you had no experience, if you had no boyfriend, if I had had no husband, what was actually true? What's actually true? If you didn't have whatever this experience was, if you didn't have the experience of this, this reality, if you were an infinite being, truly infinite being, is there anything that you wouldn't be capable of? And that's including receiving love. And do you value people's beings? If you value someone's being, then you can value your own being. And when you can value your own being, and love that being, have gratitude for that being of you, then, oh my goodness, how many people can now come forward to acknowledge, to receive, and to gift to the being that you are? I'm talking about just your being, right? Like you have this magical body and the being is like, well, the body's within the being. Actually, the being's bigger than the body. You separate them and that's a difference, right? 
you can have a body in the room, just a dead body, and it's going to create something. <laughs> you put a being in it that's fully present, that's willing to be there, that's willing to show up, that acknowledges itself, that changes everything. So all the self-doubt, what if all the self-doubt is just a bunch of lies? What if every dream that you've ever had, everything that you've ever thought might be possible is truly possible? Because if it wasn't, it couldn't enter your universe. You couldn't even ponder it as a possibility. You couldn't even dream of it because it doesn't exist. If you dream of it, it, it exists. The moment you dream of it, you brought it into existence or it already existed and you tapped in. So if you can start to, you could even ask yourself, like, what would it be like to truly love, truly have full gratitude and acknowledgement for my own being? And if that little self-doubt creeper creeper comes in, you ninja it. You take, you slice it in half and get rid of it. It's not valuable. It's not a protective mechanism. It will not protect you. Self-doubt will not, will not protect you. Presence and awareness and consciousness will keep you out of harm's way always. Thank you for exploring this topic with me. I feel like we could go forever. Maybe there's a call percolating in the future on this. Um, but I hope to see you around the world somewhere. Maybe in the next episode, please like, subscribe, share this with a friend. So grateful for you. Bye for now. Thank you for exploring the curious universe with me. Your curiosity matters. And what if, together, we could create a greater, more curious world?